This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Unlock more content online and keep your data safe. Disney is well known for its villains, from iconic ones like Ursula and Scar, to lesser loved villains like Namari and King Candy. And the thing about villains is that they're usually criminals of the highest order. So what if, by the end of their films, those villains manage to survive and stand trial? What punishments would they receive? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and once again, we are sentencing Disney villains for their crimes. Now, before we start, for this video, we'll be pretending that each villain survived their movie so that they could stand trial for their crimes. And we'll be continuing through the Disney Renaissance era today with The Little Mermaid, Mulan, The Lion King, and Hercules. If you want to see some other Disney Renaissance villains get sentenced for their crimes, make sure to check out our part one video. Okay, first off, we have the start of the Disney Renaissance, at least in most people's eyes, The Little Mermaid. Up first on the docket is Royal Crab and composer Sebastian. We're sure you're already questioning us and may be rushing to the comments, but let's be honest. For the first third of the movie, Sebastian is antagonistic, even if that antagonism is portrayed in the name of protection. While he may not have many crimes, it is necessary to quantify them. Firstly, he is responsible for accidental destruction of property when he breaks one of Ariel's many items. He commits reckless endangerment during Under the Sea by causing a clam to spit out a fish hook, which nearly hits him and others. And he's also an accessory to the king's reckless endangerment, and his worst crime is an assault. I tried to stop us! <laughs> this also happens in Under the Sea, because we know during the song that clams are alive, and despite this, he decides to use them as drums. But then again, when a character breaks out into a Disney song, logic and rules don't always apply. So Sebastian's crimes are very minor, and we're just gonna give him a fine of about 2,000 undersea dollars as restitution. From the composer to the king, next up on trial is King Triton himself. Much like Sebastian, while he's not a villain in a typical sense, he is antagonistic for the first part of the film. His list of crimes is very small, featuring only two distinct crimes we could find during the film. The first is the destruction of property he commits on all of Ariel's items, which likely totals thousands of dollars, or whatever currency they use under the sea, especially the statue. Though he might get away with this as a disciplinary action since Ariel is his kid, so this might fall under the purview of discipline. That said, what could couldn't be construed that way is the reckless endangerment he commits in the same scene. While firing energy blasts from his trident, he nearly hits Ariel, Sebastian, and Flounder, though it manages to miss. However, this doesn't stop the fact that these blasts are shown to be very powerful. So powerful, they nearly fully disintegrate Flotsam and Jetsam, which shows how dangerous they really are. This is kind of the equivalent of waving a loaded gun around. Legitimate negligence. We've decided that because of the parental angle of his property destruction, we're only going to be prosecuting his reckless endangerment, for which we've decided to sentence him to six months of community service and a court-ordered Trident safety course. Now let's move on to our next case. But first, today's video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. If you're a fan of Wicked Binge, I'm sure you're also a fan of Netflix, Disney Plus, and all sorts of other streaming services. But did you know that all of these streaming services have different libraries of available content for each country? That means there's lots of content available in places like Japan, Germany, the UK, Australia, and Brazil that isn't available in the United States, and vice versa. But you can get around this super easy with Atlas VPN. Check it out. Rick and Morty isn't available on Netflix here in the US, but I can use Atlas VPN to change my server to another country, and boom, it's instantly available. You can even unlock a variety of content on Disney Plus and a bunch of other popular streaming services. On top of this, it's also a great added security precaution to keep yourself safe from hackers on the internet. And here's the best part. Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. You can get a three year subscription to Atlas VPN for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. It's a limited time offer, so make sure you jump on the deal by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you Atlas VPN for sponsoring us today, helping us unlock more content online and keeping our data safe. 
Now let's get back to the video. The next criminal on our docket is Chef Lewis. Lewis is the head chef for Eric's kingdom, and due to being a kingdom focused on fishing, it makes sense that Lewis would be cooking a lot of fish. The thing is, this would likely constitute murder because, as we know, the fish are heavily conscious and have seemingly human intelligence. However, he is completely unaware this is the case until the end of the movie, when more people are revealed. So while he's off the hook for those, he doesn't get off the hook for attempting to murder Sebastian twice. Come out, you little beep squeak and fight like a man! The first time he may be able to slide due to being unaware of Sebastian's consciousness, but the second time, at the end of the film, he should be fully aware. So if he were to stand trial, specifically in Atlantica, we would give Chef Lewis a 15 year prison sentence. Next up, we have the twin eels and general menaces, Flotsam and Jetsam. Flotsam and Jetsam are under the employment of Ursula, who gives them all their orders. But that's not a defense of their actions. Firstly, they're shown stalking Ariel early on in the film, and commit a criminal conspiracy when Ursula plans her remaining crimes with the two of them. They also try to cause Ariel to lose her part of the contract, which is pretty illegal. And this would also count as an assault, because they tip over the boat and force them into the water. However, their most heinous crime is the attempted murder of a monarch, when they attempt to drown Prince Eric under Ursula's orders. Flotsam and Jetsam, despite being eels, deserve life in prison without parole. They manage to evade the death penalty, but only just barely. Their handler, on the other hand, is the final one up for trial from The Little Mermaid. Next, we have Ursula. Ursula has a wide list of crimes under her belt during the events of the film, and more implied to have happened prior to the film. Ursula stalks Ariel, conspires to steal Triton's trident, and has also committed a very unique and interesting crime. By forming contracts and seemingly causing the signer to fail the contract, she turns them into a bottom-feeding creature. Now, it's hard to nail down exactly what crime this is. We would consider it assault or kidnapping, but we'd go as far as to say that it's actually slavery. She owns owns these people, albeit turning them into these small Grubin-like creatures. And while she does this through supposedly legal contracts, the human world wouldn't see it that way. We see what seems like hundreds of these creatures, which would be a bunch of unique cases, especially if they manage to escape. She's also responsible for breaching contract after multiple attempts. She's also responsible for criminal coercion through mind controlling Prince Eric, which we're pretty certain would be illegal as hell if that power existed in real life. Not to mention kidnapping, animal abuse, attempted murder, and criminal threats of violence. Ursula is a menace to society and a danger to everyone under the sea. So we would sentence her to execution. Hanging was a typical practice in Denmark after it gained independence, but since she's in the ocean, we'd say just drop a toaster in the water and watch her get electrocuted. Moving on to our next film, we have Mulan. We start out with the elite Han soldiers we'll be ranking together, Zensha and Liren. The two soldiers are ranked together because they do the exact same crimes, unlike the other soldiers who have the same crimes under their belt. Zencha is the long-haired sword wielder, and Liren is the broad one in the helmet, and they commit a variety of crimes. Firstly, they trespass on the Great Wall of China and commit many acts of war, such as the arson and murder of many villagers throughout China. So we're talking about a war crime. They also kidnap the emperor and assault many soldiers during that time, although these things would be considered a part of warfare. These two are probably the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to the elite soldiers, but due to the more heinous war crimes, we're sent sentencing them to 25 years to life in prison without parole. The next pair on the docket is Bao and Bai, the bodyguards. These two are the big broad twin soldiers that are part of Shen Yu's elite team. They're seen as dumb brutes and easy to trick, but they're also still threats to behold. Not only do they do the previously mentioned crimes of arson, murder, attempted murder, kidnapping, and acts of war. They're also bodyguards, we assume, to Shen Yu, and have likely committed more crimes in the name of their boss. So they too will receive 25 years to life in prison without parole. The final elite hun on our docket is Shishao, the marksman. One could argue that this archer is Shen Yu's second in command, and likely has more of a role to play than we see from the others. This comes through in one major scene where he commits an extra crime from the others. When two Chinese soldiers try to sneak up on the Han army, Shen Yu sends them back to deliver a message. Shen Yu asks, how many soldiers does it take to deliver a message? And he responds with, 
one and is seen shooting his bow. This murder is the only one we see from the villains on screen, even if technically the actual kill is off screen. You combine this with the aforementioned arson, assault, murder, and kidnapping, and it makes sense that if one soldier is to be made an example of, it's him. So we've decided that he deserves the death penalty due to his high rank in the army. A public execution via hanging would be the easiest and simplest choice. The final villain on our Mulan docket is the immortally evil Shan Yu. Shen Yu is the leader of the Hun army and a massive threat because of this. He leads thousands of Huns across China in an attempt to invade, which is his first major crime. He's murdered hundreds or thousands, as well as destroyed buildings, destroyed forests, commits essentially acts of terrorism, and is definitely a head honcho war criminal. He commits acts of murder, including the general of Shang's troop, attempted murder of the emperor, and even the killing of many horses. Shen Yu is responsible for mass genocide across China which we see specifically in the scene when Mulan discovers the burnt village. Shan Yu's crimes make it very obvious what his punishment should be. A public execution. Unlike a soldier though, he would be executed through the ancient Chinese execution style of slow cutting, which is a slow and excruciating process. It would be done in public and would likely be an event thousands would be at. The most iconic animal based film in Disney's repertoire is up next, The Lion King. First up we have Ed. Ed is mostly seen as a lackey for the most part, being sort of mentally challenged as he doesn't speak and barely emotes. Despite this, he does commit a variety of crimes, although most of them are under orders from Scar or while helping his hyena brethren. Ed is amongst the other hyenas in committing the crime of poaching, and whilst we don't see that in the film, it is mentioned by Zazu that they are poachers. He has six cases of attempted murder and two unique cases of murder, the first being the murder of Mufasa through use of the wildebeest stampede, and then at the end of the film, he's part of the murder of Scar. Ed would get a pretty decently severe punishment due to his part in two murders and six attempted murders, but we will be more lenient due to his decreased mental capacity and give him 15 years in prison. But now let's talk about his colleagues Benzai and Shenzi. These two work alongside Ed and under Scar as part of his apparently standing army. Their crimes also include poaching, stealing food from others during Mufasa's reign. They threaten Simba, Nala, and Zazu, attempt to murder them, and even end up assaulting Zazu, trying to cook him in a geyser. Hippity hop all the way to the birdie boiler. They conspire to kill Mufasa, attempt to murder Timon and Pumbaa, and are responsible in part for the murders of both Mufasa and and Scar, which means they've killed two monarchs. The punishment for their crimes would be life in prison without parole. The final Lion King villain on our docket is Scar. Scar has a major set of crimes under his belt, whether that be criminal conspiracy or criminal coercion when he convinces Simba to put himself in harm's way. He assaults his hyenas and many others throughout his time in the movie. He attempts to murder Simba twice, forms an army, is responsible for the manslaughter of an unnamed hyena when they fall through a crack during his song, and attempts to frame Simba for the death of Mufasa. Mufasa. He commits wrongful imprisonment during his time as king, locking Zazu in the ribcage of an unknown animal, and assaults Sarabi when she dares to go against him. However, his worst crime, beyond murdering Mufasa, is the massive deaths he causes by making all the food leave or die during his time as king, killing hundreds if not thousands in his wake. Scar's punishment is severe but fair, public execution via hanging. Though he pays for his crimes in the film in a very similar way, he's publicly executed by the hyenas, and it's a fitting punishment for his crime. The final movie that we'll be discussing today is Hercules. First up on the docket are the Fates. These three possess an eyeball that allows them to see in the past, present, and future. This allows them to not only see, but potentially change the future. But beyond this, they also hold the threat of fate. Every human has one, and it's essentially the threat of their life. They cut the line when the human's life has ended, and they've killed millions because of this. However, the thing about this is it's the job of the Fates, and as such, they likely wouldn't get prosecuted for this or the murder of Meg. Though, while it is their job, they do seem to enjoy it to a sadistic degree. On top of this, the one crime we can get them on is criminal conspiracy, because they are the ones who not only convince Hades to continue his hostile takeover, but end up convincing him to get rid of Hercules. Plus, if they see the future, even if it's just possible futures, they should have seen this coming from Hades. All things considered, we're giving the fates a mere five years in prison, because they do have a job to do amongst the mythology. 
Next up, we have Megara, or Meg for short. Meg doesn't have too many crimes to speak of, but what she does is still criminal. Her two crimes seem to be against her will. The first is criminal conspiracy to harm and supposedly kill Hercules, which she really seems adverse to but doesn't actively try to stop. Her second and likely worst crime would be the criminal coercion that her, alongside Pain and Panic, used to convince Hercules to put himself into danger. She actively shows that she's not interested in this and doesn't want Hercules to die, which we have to factor into her sentence. Given how she turns things around in the end, we're gonna let Meg off with six months of community service. Being forced into committing crimes definitely gets her a lighter sentence, but that doesn't mean she doesn't deserve to take at least some accountability. Paired together, Pain and Panic are up next on the docket. Pain and Panic are Hades' highest ranking minions and have committed a wide variety of crimes under his employment. They make a pretty hefty impression by kidnapping and poisoning baby Hercules under the orders of Hades. The poisoning comes from the fact that they utilize the mortality potion to turn Hercules mortal and then attempt to murder him. They then attempt to fraud Hercules by being two mortal children and putting him into danger using the Hydra. This would also count as criminal coercion. Given the heinous nature of their first crime, we sentence Pain and Panic to 25 years in prison without the possibility for parole. Also ranked together, the next criminals on our list are the Titans. Ergus, Lythos, Hydros, Pyros, and Stratos. These titans commit a variety of crimes of their own volition, and not because they're ordered by Hades, even though that does happen later on in the film. They cause extreme destruction, including what would be classified as vandalism, arson, destruction of property, and murder. Each of these, while not shown on screen, are quite obvious for the most part. They're also responsible for animal abuse, assault, attempted murder, and an attempt at a hostile takeover. Each of them have been trying to attack Zeus because of revenge for prior imprisonment, so one could also include a prison break in this list of their crimes. Assuming the Titans would be made mortal or some other way to be punished, they would be sentenced to death, with the means of execution being poison. If they were unable to be killed in this way, then they would just rot in prison instead. And finally, we get to the last villain on our docket, none other than the Lord of the Underworld himself, Hades. Hades is the big bad from the depths of hell, with what could be hundreds of crimes under his belt over the 18 years the film takes place. He levels threats of abuse at pain and panic, criminally conspires to kill Hercules and take over Olympus, and is the one who orders the kidnapping, poisoning, and attempted murder of Hercules. He abuses pain and panic multiple times, commits three different acts of criminal coercion through the use of his minions, and attempts to murder Hercules at least seven times, as far as we can see. He destroys property, kidnaps Meg, and assaults anyone who gets in his way. However, his worst crimes are his attempted coup de grace and subsequent murder of Zeus, as well as falsely imprisoning all of the other gods when they refuse to accept his coup. Hades is known for his fiery temper and many attempts at murder, and this means that he deserves a pretty hefty punishment. The sentence we've decided to hand down to Hades is a public execution, first by being made mortal, likely by his own potion, and then thrown from a cliff to his death, which is actually pretty accurate to the torture he goes through by the end of the film, when he's thrown into the whirlpool in the river Styx. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our sentencing. Remember to get your three-year subscription to Atlas VPN for just $1.99 per month, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Follow the link below to start unlocking more streaming content today. And be sure to check out our first Sentencing Disney Villains for Their Crimes video, 